We just left our meeting with uh, Provost Johannes Britz. Uh, our cameras were not allowed in. He didn't feel comfortable being on camera. Uh, but basically, we asked him questions in regards to uh, his process for overturning decisions made by the Office of Equity and Diversity Services when it came to um, sexual assault and sexual harassment allegations. Um, we were able to get uh, responses to our questions um, that were derived from the statement that he prepared. Um, so he did have a written statement and he was able to answer a lot of our questions using that statement. Um, we did find that it was difficult to answer some questions that he was not necessarily uh, familiar with. Um, so he did mention that he has to coordinate um, responses with a statement that will be coming from the uh, Vice Chancellor of Communications, Tom Lojack. So as the lead student investigative journalists on this entire series, we have been stonewalled from nearly every direction. So speaking with the provost, it was slightly refreshing because he was able to provide us with a lot of information, uh, but he was also open to saying that he didn't know or he, need to, he needed to reference with either uh, Vice Chancellor Lil Jack or the legal counsel in order to come up with a more clear answer. Um, and it was a little bit difficult because we did ask him some, you know, some pointed yes or no questions. Um, for instance, we wanted to know because he is the final decision maker, does he interview the complainant, does he interview the respondent, you know, how much um, actual investigating does he do? And he said that he doesn't actually conduct um, investigations. Um, and then he went on to say that on occasion it's very rare. So we didn't really get a definitive answer of if he you know, actually interviews respondents or complainants or even witnesses. Sometimes he reads full witness notes. Maybe sometimes he doesn't. We, don't, we didn't really get a clear answer on that. Like Talis said, not only did he say sometimes I review the entire file of you know said cases, but he also noted that he doesn't interview uh, neither the complainant or, uh, the or the respondent, yeah. which... Well, we were just noting that considering the sensitive nature of these complaints a lot of times, it's important to be able to read body language and to determine if someone's lying, or if they're hiding something, and you can't necessarily do that from reading from a piece of paper. Um, so that's why we wanted to know about his process, since he is the final decision maker, and if he does overturn EDS, who does conduct these in-person interviews, what kind of intel are you getting from these people firsthand? We're currently waiting on a campus statement from Vice Chancellor Lil Jack's office. So we've asked a lot of pointed questions, questions specific to cases, questions in regards to the provost's policy um, and philosophy when determining, um, when determining, you know, the end result of said allegations. So once we have that statement, we hope to know more information.